Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are starting a new series on cloud and specifically Google Cloud. Before we get started with cloud, if you are new to this channel, please take a look at the DevOps from scratch playlist and uh, go through the list of videos and make sure that you are familiar with everything mentioned in here. If you already know your way around Linux, feel free to completely skip all of that. But if you are a new DevOps engineer and uh, not very well versed with Linux, I would strongly recommend that you go through this playlist. Anyway, let's get started. So what is cloud? We're going to keep things as simple as possible. While I was preparing to make this video, I looked at the existing videos in YouTube about uh, Google Cloud. And uh, to be honest, most of them were filled with technical jargon and may not be suitable for someone who is really new to the, the whole idea of cloud itself. So in this series, I'm going to keep uh, our motto of doing something when we really need to do something as in goal based learning. Okay, so what exactly is cloud? It's one of those most misunderstood term uh, when it comes to the industry. To say in simple terms, it's basically renting compute power, storage, software or services over the internet. So how exactly does it work? So there are these cloud providers like Amazon, Google, Microsoft, DigitalOcean, etc. There are a ton of them and they all have data centers across the globe. For example, this is one data center of Google and these data centers are full of powerful computers and uh, really fast internet. And these data centers across the globe are connected by really fast networks. As in this case, this is the Google's network endpoints across the globe. So in these data centers of many things that they run, one of them are virtual machines. These virtual machines can be rendered by customers to run their own uh, websites or applications, etc. In addition to these virtual machines, they also offer services. For now, to keep things simple, we'll just say they offer services like database management so that we don't have to run our own databases. Okay, so why do I need cloud or why do you need cloud? So let's say you have a startup uh, with an application and uh, you need to host it on the internet. What are your options? Well, first you can host it in your own data center where you will have your own servers sitting in a room and uh, you know you basically manage the hardware, the software, the internet connection, everything. Another option would be to use a cloud provider like Google Cloud, DigitalOcean, AWS, etc. Now, obviously, the first option is not very practical for the most of us because it's going to cost a lot of money to run a data center. So the only option that we have is, well, you could run your own servers at your home and um, you know, try to make it work, but that's not very practical. So we are left with the option of using a cloud provider. For example, in DigitalOcean, you can get started as low as $5 a month. So what are the advantages of cloud? First of all, it's very cheap to get started. As I mentioned before, for $5 a month, you can have your own cloud server in DigitalOcean and run your website from there. And it is pay as you go. So most of these cloud providers, they bill by the hour. So if you want 10 servers to run for like a few hours, you only have to pay for those few hours. And as your business grows, as your compute needs grow, you can add more and more servers and you only have to pay for those servers that you added. Also, you can you know delete the servers when you don't need them anymore and you don't have to pay them. And another important advantage is room for scaling. If you are using something like Google Cloud or AWS, they have a huge capacity in their data centers. So most of the time, you could easily scale your infrastructure or your servers as much as you want, as long as you have the money to pay for it. It may not be the case if we are running our own data centers. So if you are running your own data centers, then you can have to scale it. Like you can, you can have to physically buy new servers and add them to the, the data center, configure it and stuff like that. But when it comes to cloud, you simply have to press a button and you can launch a new server within minutes. And another advantage would be world-class redundancy. So these cloud providers like Google and Amazon, they have servers across the globe. Uh, they have, so here, as you can see in the Google Cloud website, they have data centers across the globe. So that means you can have your website run from any of these data centers. So even if an entire data center goes down, your website or your web application will still be able to run and function without any problem. And that also gives us another advantage, which is that the infrastructure is globally distributed, which means if your business is based in you know, Mumbai and uh, most of your customers are from the US, then you don't have to worry about that. You can simply have your servers launched in the US region so that the website is closer to your customers. And if your business grows and uh, you want to add more regions, 
you want to be able to reach to the customers in more regions and uh, give them a better experience it's just a matter of adding more servers to, to your infrastructure in those regions for example for the company that i work for we have servers in all the major regions so that the customers can have a good experience in terms of latency like otherwise if you have your servers in only one region let's say you have servers only in mumbai then your customers who are visiting your website from let's say the united states they are going to face a huge latency why because the packets from your Mumbai data center has to travel all the way to the Los Angeles or uh, wherever the customers are. It's going to take around 200 milliseconds of latency and that's, a not, that's not a very good experience for them. With the use of cloud, we can mitigate those problems fairly easily. So obviously it is a lot easier to manage a cloud provider account than managing a data center. More often than not, you can just simply click a few buttons, get your servers up and running. And because of this complex globally distributed networks and servers and data centers, we can have amazingly complex infrastructure to meet our requirements. We will be creating and talking about all of this stuff in the future videos. For now, just remember that the cloud provides a lot of flexibility in creating infrastructures. Okay, so there are a few downsides to the whole cloud computing thing, especially when we talk about these uh, public cloud providers like uh, Google Cloud or AWS. And one of them would be lack of control over the infrastructure. Like if you have your website running in Google Cloud, let's say, and uh, if Google Cloud is having some outages, then there is nothing really you can do about it. You have to wait for them to fix it. So you are at their mercy to have it fixed in time. So another thing would be privacy and security. While the providers like AWS and Google, they're really good at what they do. We have to take their word for it. There is no way for us to know that whatever we upload to the their infrastructure or you know our data in these servers are 100% confident. But most of the time, it's not that big of a problem unless you are a government agency or something and you have really sensitive information that you really don't want other people to look at. Another problem would be vendor lock-in. Like, um, for example, if you have your whole infrastructure in Google Cloud, then it's going to be pretty difficult for you to move out of um, move out of Google Cloud and let's say move to another provider like AWS. It's going to take a lot of time and effort depending on the size of your infrastructure to move from one provider to another. While on the topic of cloud, there are a few different types of cloud and um, one of them is private which just means that uh, you're running your own cloud infrastructure. For example, if you have your own data centers, then you can run a private cloud. Only you and uh, people who you decide can access this data and everything in it. And then there is the public cloud. This is the more prominent one, the one that are used by more people. Uh, things like AWS, Google Cloud, etc. are called uh, public cloud because it's, well, public. And um, as long as you can pay them, you can use their service. So then there is like hybrid and uh, multi-cloud, which just means like, you know, you, co you use a combination of um, uh, private, public, and, uh, you know, different providers, etc. In all of our videos, we will be focusing on the public cloud because we don't have the resources to build our own cloud infrastructure. So we're stuck with public cloud. Okay, so which cloud provider should you use? It's a tough question. It totally depends on your needs and uh, your experience and uh, what you value as a customer. For example, if I were to run my own personal websites or something of small scale, I would totally use DigitalOcean because it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier to get started with DigitalOcean. And uh, even if you have a small business and uh, you only need like a few servers and you don't really need all these complicated features of AWS or Google Cloud, you would be better off using DigitalOcean as it's going to be a lot cheaper and uh, easier for you to manage. But if your business is a bit bigger and uh, you need a lot more features and uh, functionalities, then you may want to look into other providers like AWS, Azure and uh, Google Cloud. I personally prefer Google Cloud over AWS. I know people would argue about it in the comments, but this is my personal preference and um, these are my reasons. First of all, Google Cloud is a lot easier to get into than AWS, but it's a lot more, you know, it offers a lot more features than, you know, something like DigitalOcean. So this is one of the major points in favor of Google Cloud that the UI, the dashboard that we use to manage our services is a lot cleaner and more consistent than AWS. Personally, I can't stand the AWS UI. It's it's cluttered and heavy and sluggish. I just prefer Google's uh, Google Cloud's UI over AWS. Also, the CLI offered by Google Cloud called G Cloud, it's a lot better than the AWS offering. And Google Cloud is a lot cheaper than 
AWS. But there are a lot of other factors in favor of AWS like um, they have a lot more services to offer but for our use case i personally believe google cloud is the better option to get started with so in this series we will be completely focusing on google cloud all right so what can we do with google cloud so google cloud offers a lot of products and uh, on the high level we can categorize them into compute database storage big data and networking this is not the full list of the services and products that they offer but this is a start. So compute basically means we are actually renting their compute power or uh, we are renting uh, their virtual machines. And in that comes Google uh, Compute Engine and uh, Kubernetes Engine. We will not be talking about Google Kubernetes Engine in this series because we are yet to talk about containers and Kubernetes. Containers and Kubernetes. We will come back to GKE or Google Kubernetes Engine after that. When it comes to databases, Google offers Bigtable, SQL and Spanner. If you are not aware of any of these, don't worry about it at all. We will get to them in the future. So in terms of storage, like if you want to store files in the Google Cloud, we have the option of Google Cloud Storage or we have the option of having, you know, block storage using persistent disks. And uh, we have the option of cloud, man uh, cloud key management service to store secrets and uh, sensitive information in the cloud. One of the big features of why Google Cloud is so great is their big data offerings like BigQuery and uh, Dataflow. We will not be focusing on this right now because it's not really of importance to us at this point but i will probably be covering them in one of the future videos and uh, last but not least it's the networking we will be talking about what a virtual private cloud is and how to create networks and um, you know how to load balance how to use cloud dns and a uh, lot of cool stuff so that's pretty much it for this introduction video in the next one we will be actually dealing with a goal which would be to host our website in google cloud and uh, we're gonna go from there we're gonna go into more complicated needs like uh, needing a database needing load balancing auto scaling and things like that so we will deal with all of these google cloud products and services when we need them instead of just throwing each of them out into the wild i feel like it would be a lot better and easier for us to understand if we focus on what we need and when we need it so thanks for watching. See you in the next one.